Diffeomorphic is an independent add-on which bridges DAZ Studio with Blender, allowing you to import and use its character models. Although there's already an official DAZ to Blender bridge, Diffeomorphic is more advanced, stable, and feature-rich. So let's get to work installing it. First, we need to go to the Diffeomorphic website, which is linked in the description. The website itself is structured like a blog, with the author regularly posting updates about the add-on's development. Due to Diffeomorphic's size, the author has broken it up into several separate add-ons. Out of all of these add-ons, we just need the DAZ importer. To download it, either click on the DAZ importer link in the header, or search for the author's blog post announcing a new version. The header link will take you to an info page. There, click Stable Version. This will take you to a download page. Once you have downloaded it, go over to the compressed folder and open it. Go to the folder named 2 Daz Studio. In there, you will see a folder called Scripts. Open that, and you will see a folder called Diffeomorphic and a PNG file. Copy both of these. This script will allow Daz to export to Blender. To install the script, we need to first find the Daz 3D library directory. Open up a fresh Daz scene and click on the Content Library panel. You will see a folder called Daz Studio Formats. Click on that and it will drop down to reveal several more folders. Find My Daz 3D Library, right click, and go to Browse Folder Location. That will bring up the Windows Explorer location for your Daz 3D Library, which houses all of the content and assets that Daz is currently using. In there, you'll see a folder called Scripts. Inside that, there will be a folder called Utilities. Paste the Diffeomorphic folder and the PNG file into the Scripts folder. Go back to DAZ, right-click, and refresh the DAZ 3D Library folder. You will now see that the Diffeomorphic add-on has appeared. Now, let's install the importer into Blender. Open a fresh Blender scene, go up to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then click Install. Find the Diffeomorphic zip file, and then press Install Add-on. Once it's installed, tick it to activate. Now in your Blender scene, press N to bring up your add-on menu. You will see two tabs named DAZ. Click on DAZ Setup, then click on Global Settings. In this menu, you'll need to connect Blender to your DAZ 3D library. To quickly do this, go back to DAZ Studio. In the Diffeomorphic Script folder, select the Save Paths button. That will generate a file, which will contain the locations of all our DAZ content libraries. You can save this to your documents. In Blender, go up to Load Root Paths, then Find and Load that file. This will automatically paste the locations of all your DAZ content libraries into your global settings, allowing Blender to import directly from DAZ. Now that Diffeomorphic is fully installed, let me now show you how to use it. Let's start by importing a basic character model into Blender. First, open a fresh DAZ scene. Then load in a Genesis 8.1 mail dev load from your smart content panel. Create a new folder on your desktop and call it DAZ Genesis 8 Base. Then save your DAZ scene to that folder. Now go to the scripts folder in the content library and open Diffeomorphic. If you want to add the Diffeomorphic exporter to DAZ's file menu, select Setup Menus, then press OK to all the prompts. Diffeomorphic will then appear as several export options. Select Export to Blender. This will create a script which will allow Blender to import this model from our saved DAZ scene. Save that DBZ file to your desktop folder. Make sure to save your DAZ scene before switching to Blender. Open up a fresh Blender scene. Press N, go to DAZ Setup, then select Easy Import. In the Import menu, you'll see a list of settings here on the right. These are very important, as they give you access to multiple DAZ features at the expense of increasing the import's file size. If you go up to Operator Presets, you will see that the author has left several preset options for us to use. Select Genesis 8.1, as that was the model we used. Make sure that Body Morphs is ticked, as this will allow us to import custom poses. Now open the Genesis 8 base folder. You will see the DAZ scene we saved. Select it and import. It will take some time to load in. If you get an error message, then most likely you have missed a step in the installation process. Once it has loaded in, you'll have a fully rigged DAZ character model in Blender. 
Now, what's great about Diffeomorphic is that all of Dazza's joint limitations and morph controls have been converted to be compatible with Blender. This means all of Dazza's safeguards preventing you from making an unrealistic pose are still available in Blender. If you want to edit a limitation modifier, select the joint, then go to Bone Constraints. Now that we have imported a Daz character into Blender, let me now show you how to apply a pose to it. If you have watched my posing in Daz Studio tutorial, you will know that I created a custom walking patrol pose. To import that onto our character, first select the armature, then go to Daz Runtime, go to the posing menu, and select Import Pose. Go to the pose folder that we created in the Kitbash project, then click on the patrol pose file that we saved. Now there's a reason why I told you to turn on body morphs. If we import this without any settings, you will see that the hands haven't been posed. The reason for this is because we used the grass pose slider in Daz Studio, which was a body morph. So when you import a custom pose, make sure effect morphs is ticked. To see these morphs in action, go over to the right and click on these three drop-down menus. They will give you access to the morph controls from Daz. In Body Morphs, find the left-hand grasp slider. You will see that the value that we set in our Daz scene has been imported into Blender. If you manually adjust the slider, you will be able to change how much the hand grasps. Feel free to go through this menu and take a look at what all the different morph values do. When resetting the character, you will notice that the hands have not reset. That's because that pose is controlled by a morph. To reset those, go over to Runtime Menu and click Clear Morphs. Now, let's take a look at what makes Diffeomorphic such a useful tool, which are the character expression controls. Go to Facts, Expressions, and you will see a list of different emotions. If you adjust one of those sliders, you will see that the character will start mimicking that emotion. You can also chain different emotions together. For example, we could make him happy and angry, or we could make him happy and surprised. If you want to make your own custom expressions, then use the Facts menu. This will give you control of the character's facial muscles, allowing you to go into even more detail. And this is why I love Diffeomorphic, as you can first create a custom character in Daz Studio, then import and pose that character in Blender, or keeping all of Daz's functionality. Lastly, if you want to import poses which you have bought off the Daz shop, you must first go to My Daz 3D Library. In there, click People, then click the Genesis version which the pose pack was designed for. Click the author of the pack's name, then click the name of the pose pack you want to use. You will then get a list of poses to choose from. Copy that URL, then in Blender, go to Pose Import and paste that in. I recommend you bookmark the locations of your pose packs so you can reach them quickly. You can also import Genesis 8 poses onto a Genesis 9 character. To do this, make sure Convert Poses is ticked, then select the Genesis version that the pose was designed for. This will give your character the most accurate pose possible, which is very useful if you already have a large library of Genesis 8 poses. Now that you have Diffeomorphic installed, please check out my kit bashing series, as I'll be demonstrating how this tool can be used to both assist with posing, as well as apply a rigged face to your character.